Hi, I'm Ayana, and this is Andre. After college, instead of chasing the American dream, we decided to chase our dream, the dream of travel. This led us to purchase our sailboat Naida, a Hunter 34 monohull. Follow along to see where the wind takes us. Today, we're installing the water maker. It's gonna be a big day, a big <laughs> install. As you can see, the boat is in shambles right now, but we have everything pretty much laid out to where it should be. We already started doing some stuff yesterday. We made this shelf for the uh, membrane. Yeah, so we pretty much dry fit everything last night. We got everything laid out, so it should go smooth. We bought all the fittings. We wrote out everything we should need. So just the final install to the tanks, we might need to make another run for that just because we weren't sure how we were gonna do it. Everybody recommends their own way of doing it, so. Uh, I guess when we get there, we'll figure that part out. All right, so one of the problems that we are having finding a mounting place and why this is all ripped apart is because this membrane right here is 43 inches long. So we don't have a space that's 43 inches consecutive without any interruption. We were gonna slide it under here right next to the water tank, but um, there's not a gap big enough uh, for the membrane to fit in there. The stringer here is like 40 inches. So we are just close, so it's gonna have to mount in front. It's not ideal the way we are going to have to set it up just because we're going to use a whole cubby mounting it, but it's our only option and we'll still have this area for storage. So we've seen, a, there's a lot of install videos with the Seawater Pro and generally it's like a plug and play system. It's just like putting together pieces of a puzzle, super straightforward, super easy. Um, so the only tricky part for us is that we have minimum space. So we chose to do the single membrane system because we only have 125 and 135 gallon water tank because these things like to be run so that you can constantly be flushing them through. It doesn't get stagnant water. So we finished the installation of the shelf here. Membrane sits right there. Now that we know where the membrane is gonna sit, we were able to figure out where the filters can fit in with that so that we have room to plumb everything put everything as high and as left as possible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue on these three quarter inch marine plywood to the fiberglass so that we can drill a bunch of holes in there. Uh, we're just gonna attach that to the fiberglass shell with some li liquid nails now. So everything's plastic, so I'm trying not to uh, over tighten. You have a tendency to over tighten things. <laughs> they specifically warned us to not over tighten some of the fittings in this system. Now we have to run the AC wire from the cockpit um, locker where the batteries are all the way to here so that we can wire up the motor. I think we have a new style of uh, high pressure pump. So we're gonna text Bailey from Seawater Pro see if she can give any insight. Okay, so we just ran the wires for the high pressure pump and they went, the batteries are in the cockpit locker here. So I crawled in there and we got the wire going through the cockpit locker. And then it's gonna go through the wall of the cockpit locker, underneath the bed, through all the different compartments here, underneath here, up through here, and down behind here to here. And to there. Okay, so we're creating a mounting plate this is going to be the bottom. We're marking where the, the bolt holes are going to go and then we're going to inset them about this much so that there's enough um, room to ratchet them down. So we'll attach that first to the high pressure pump and then this will be nailed 
to the floor. So we'll just do four nails to the floor, four bolts to the pump. And then we also got a nice rubber uh, backing. Where is that? Nice rubber backing, so hopefully, oh, look how perfect size it is. Um, hopefully that will help when the vibration and sound. The idea is they'll sit flush so that it's not coming up off the floor. And the reason we over drilled the diameter is so that we can lock it down like this. Easy. So we just cut a little excess hatch right there. Um, and that's where all the plumbing to the panel is going to come out. Um, we wanted to cut a perfect square, but we just cut it with the shape of the oh, fiberglass. Okay. And now we're on to the plumbing. Look at this boat yoga. Hey, show me, show me your head through your legs. <laughs> so right now, Ayana's finishing up the plumbing. I can't, like, maneuver back there. It's way too tight. So we got everything pretty much plumbed. Um, I ran the fresh water line to the T connector where we're gonna have to branch off into our fresh water because that gives the fresh water rinse through there. Boom, boom, boom. And then we have the high pressure hose here um, that goes straight to the membrane. Uh, we ran into a problem. Um, one of our high pressure hoses, the one that goes from the opposite side of the membrane to the panel is uh, just like a couple inches too short, so we're probably gonna have to get like an eight foot cable. So that will be a project for tomorrow. Right now we're gonna finish plumbing this and we'll see you guys tomorrow once we uh, get the rest of the fittings we need. Okay, it's Monday and we're headed to Seawater Pearl because we need extra hoses. Uh, they were closed Saturday and Sunday. The last time we were doing this project was Friday. The boat's still in shambles, so. Our uh, friends Raf and Sasha letting us borrow their trucks to head over there. Welcome <laughs> to Raf. Car rental. Yeah, car tool shed and car rental service. <laughs> switched out the panel from the white to the wood grain because we realized afterwards that white is really cool and modern looking but our whole boat is wood so a high pressure hose is really hard to work with so you can't really bend it like we would not have been able to do this with that so so I've got to cut into our shelf. So we've run into yet another problem, <laughs> as usual. We have to run the wires from the back of the boat to the front of the boat, back the and, and back to the back of the boat, and we have to run it with this wire, which of course has this big square block on it. Usually when we run stuff, we'll cut like, you know small holes out, sort of like the one that you saw here. Um, and it's no big deal, but this is on the very end of this uh, line and on the other side it's not detachable um, because it's already wired into the, the pump. It's a new day. 
we had to go to the store and get more wire and uh, we think we're close. Everything's ran and we're just wiring the high pressure pump now and then I think we'll just mount the other intake pump and then we'll give it a trial test run. So we gotta go back to see Water Pro again. All right, so it is pretty late right now. We've been working on the water maker for the past um, couple days now. Not working all day, it's just we run into a problem and then it's too late to go get the part. So we have to like cancel it. Last night we worked pretty late. Today we got everything we need and I think I finally have everything uh, put together the way it should be. Um, Ayanna had to run to get packages. I'm just waiting on her to come back. We're gonna run it and hopefully everything goes well. And if so, I'll be a happy camper because this project took way longer than I feel it should have. And uh, we'll have fresh water, unlimited. Okay, we figured it out. So the piece that was leaking, uh, we actually had to remove the Teflon tape because it needed to, it was keeping it from going um, far up enough to hit the O-ring which would then kind of seal the part that was leaking. Um, so we did that and everything's done. We're ready to run it. So we're powering our water maker with the generator because we need to add solar to our battery system. So right now that's gonna be our option. Maybe we'll switch it out later. This is the moment of truth. Okay, so it's plugged into the generator. So we have finally installed the water maker, um, like five days later or something like that, <laughs> something outrageous. It's still not completely done. We still have to um, do something with the panel, mount it up, but we just ran it. We're going to fill up a jug. We actually cleared our empty tanks so that we can drill into them and tap and plumb into it. So, so we're just going to run um, the fresh water line into a jug, get seven gallons, make sure the water is all right. And then tomorrow we will finish plumbing it into our tanks and we will have a Seawater Pro water maker. Okay, it is day five, six. It is day six of water maker install. We just drilled an inspection port in our water tank. This is what it's looking like. Because we're gonna have to drill a hole in to plumb it, um, so this way we can get a good look inside and clean everything out. I didn't have one before. Usually they come with them. Yeah, our boat is like approaching 40 years old, so we're doing a lot of modern upgrades. And so what is left? So we have to drill, we have to take the freshwater line, and right now we are waiting on a faucet so that we can get the first couple minutes of fresh water, let it run off, and then look at the TDS monitor, make sure it's under 200 or under 500. Under 200 <laughs> is good for drinking and under 500 is good for just like considered potable water to shower, brush your teeth, as long as you're not consuming it. So what we'll do is we'll run the fresh water pipe, one to the sink for now, um, and then we'll run one straight to the tank so that way we can fill this up. So we're adding our hole for our Water fill line. So we drilled a hole big enough for it to fit, and now we're gonna seal it with some water weld. We wanted to try find try and find some drinking water safe stuff, so this is all we could get. If anyone knows any other adhesive sealants that are better, do let us know. This we're gonna have to like knead with our hands. This stuff's good for emergencies too. We actually used it to fix our outboard for like how many months? Like five months, right? Something like that. We had a cracked exhaust manifold on our Tahatsu outboard and we actually just like slapped some of that stuff on it. It was good. I'm gonna put this in our air fryer. 
Oh, it didn't echo. I thought it would echo. 